All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology, and we have Anuradha Jividas again. And now in the sky, Jupiter and Venus both are transiting in Jeshtha Nakshatra in Scorpio, and Venus will leave out very soon, but Jupiter will be there almost till the end of this year. After it goes retrograde into Mula, but then again it comes back in March, April. So it's a very uh, interesting nakshatra to study for this year because we know that Jupiter is one of the slow-moving planets like Saturn. And Saturn has also been in Jesta <laughs> in the recent past. So that energy we can still feel sometimes. So welcome, madam, and please enlighten us about Jesta nakshatra. Thank you so much, Bhavajit. It's a pleasure to be back on your channel every time with a new nakshatra and a new discussion. Uh, so today, I will be talking on Jeshta Nakshatra. Uh, the energy of Jeshta is very vibrant because both the Gurus, the Dev Guru and the Daitya Guru, Jupiter and Venus are there in the skies in Jeshta Nakshatra. Both have their own flavors and both are very important for Jeshta because Venus imparts the qualities of lust of uh, you know the drinking habits and things that uh, indra has the deity has and jupiter is important for jeshta because jupiter is the guide brihaspati the dev guru is the guide who gets um, indra back on his track so this is a very important time for those people who have jeshta nakshatra and You've got freeze. <laughs> watch and work on the Deshra Nakshatra now. So we'll uh, start with the Deshra Nakshatra and uh, the deity of this Nakshatra is Indra. Indra is one of the first bonds of um, you know um, Aditi and uh, Rishi Kashya and before we move on to Indra let us know what Jeshta itself means Jesht in uh, in Sanskrit means the eldest the one who is the eldest and the deity is very the, the star is so named probably because the deity of the star is Indra. Indra, as I told you earlier, he is the one born of Aditi, the mother goddess, and uh, Kashyaprishi. Kashyaprishi is said to be the progenitor of all the three worlds because um, the Deityas, the, the Devtas, Deityas born of Diti, Another wife of Rishi Kashyap from the same, uh, you know, father, both Aditi, Diti, and there are so many sisters married to, 11 sisters married to Kashyapa. And they had, they were uh, the daughters of uh, our, um, what should I say? They were the daughters of, uh, Man, uh, just a second. Uh, you know, um, now I'll not be able to recall. They were the daughters of uh, Prajapati Daksh. Okay, so Prajapati Daksh had 60 daughters. 27, as we know, were married off as uh, the daughters of uh, the nakshatras to moon. And Jeshta is also one of the nakshatras. So Indra is one of the children of Aditi also the ruler of Jeshta Nakshatra. Now, Jeshta Nakshatra entirely falls in Scorpio, the sign of Scorpio. And there are three main stars in the constellation. When we write three stars in the constellation of Scorpio, it does not mean that there are only three stars. It means it implies that these three stars are the most visible from the planet Earth. There are thousands and thousands of stars out there blinking and they can be very much more vibrant than the sun, our sun, which is also a star, 
but because of such huge distances they only uh, come across to us like in the poem twinkle twinkle little star but they are stellar beings stellar huge entities and this nakshatra covers 16 degree 40 seconds to 30 degrees entirely in scorpio one of the zones that it covers is the gandhanta as per my research as per what i have been across i find this gandhanta of jeshta and mula being one of the most dangerous one of the most difficult to cross over what is gandhanta it is actually a knot you know there is ant means at the end and gand means a knot a knot at the end so the end of one and the beginning of another i tied together it's a crossover it's a crossover from finally the uh, you know one end the four the four uh, zodiac signs of zodiac end starting from leo to scorpio end at jeshta and they begin in at mula so it's like uh, when you tie it or when you sew two pieces of cloth together that's there's a weak link over there at the same time it's a crossing over from water to a fire sign so there is an any it is entire uh, where you lose all the karmic debt and you move to a new sign into future because water is past and uh, fire is future mula lies in the fiery sign of sagittarius so there's a lot of things involved here basically one of the very very uh, difficult zones to carry over also lies partly in this nakshatra arohana shakti that's the power of this nakshatra it rises up it has the ability to fight okay because as we see the foundation above is to attack the foundation below is to defend both are mechanisms of fighting one one attacks the other defends that's what the mechanism is in fighting okay and the desire is to gain supremacy amongst the gods and become one with the gods <clears throat> why because when you're fighting when you're rising up when you're winning battles your status as a hero keeps on rising ultimately you become a superhero and speaking of superhero we will also see one superhero uh, making his present felt and in this nakshatra okay so <clears throat> it is all about rising coming conquering and gaining in the battle field uh as i said rising conquering coming and gaining in the battle field so bill gates okay so bill gates is one of uh, we know he is america's richest man okay uh, one of the richest man he is computer millionaire his company microsoft was published in 1986 coming from very humble beginnings he made a very very strong impact in the world uh, and changed the dynamics of how you look into the world look at the world and it is because of him and the advent of so much of computer that things became so easy i still remember the days when the the filing system would actually take up hours and hours to be done <clears throat> today it's just a click away microsoft word a very well known name all over so so many things not just word excel sheets everything this man is responsible for it highly competitive the competition with apple steve jobs was very well known their competition was very well known now he has rahu rahu in um nada nakshatra of jeshta rahu in the 6th house for all out there rahu in the 6th house whoever if you see a chart of a person with rahu in the 6th house no for certain that there is no winning against this man rahu in upachay houses gives you win at all costs so it's rahu in the 6th house in jeshta nakshatra by hook or by crook this person will make sure 
that he attains a lot of ground okay so uh, we take forward we will see a number of um, you know cases here and we will see indra as who he is just to say indra is a chief of the gods and lord of the skies and lightning he is also the god of thunder he is the dragon slayer so we know that uh, you know indra in the uh, earlier times that is in the rigvedic times and till the time in um, you know in the kaliyug right before kaliyug it was dwapar indra do what did indra do as one of the very worshipping deities well uh, being worshipped deities he had a lot of power he had a lot of strength being the holder of the vajra do you know the vajra is is a is a device is a his thunderbolt is made out of the bones of rishi dadichi so being the uh, being the holder which is one of the strongest weapons in this universe uh, so it is said uh because rishi dadichi had made his bones so strong by intense penance you know that nothing could nothing could break that weapon the, those bones so he is also known as the god of thunder because vajra is thunder means thunder and he is the lord of the skies and lightning and he is the one responsible for the rain okay he is the dragon slayer he is also known as demon ritta okay uh, he is also known to play demon ritta who happened to be um, the son of his brother and we, that is another story which we uh, would do when we are doing chitra nakshatra also that can be done in chitra nakshatra also because he is the son of tatswar or um, vishvakarma okay okay and then indra is perpetually young looking indra has very beautiful looks and uh, he is uh, he is he is well maintained he is a very athletic body because he is also very athletic when we are talking about you know somebody going into warfare you cannot go with a heavy tummy and you know shaped out you have to be totally in shape to run or to fight any battle so he has a very athletic and a very appealing uh, look also body wise also is very very strong and athletic that ways he rules the east direction and he symbolized by the bull he is the controller of our senses when we talk about indra okay in in hindi we have a word and sanskrit we have a word called indriya indriya means all your senses so they include hearing seeing smelling tasting and feeling which you do through the skin so that makes indra a very uh, sensuous person in pursuit of worldly pleasures because the worldly pleasures can be felt intensely through these senses when we shut off these senses that is the time when we are trying to control our indriyas and we are making a journey inward okay so that is the time when you are moving across from indra to moola but that is a different class or different video altogether so we will come across a number of stories that we are going to you know take the first story here that we are going to take is as i told you we were talking about uh, the senses okay so indra is great on his senses one of the things of all the things that he has you know all all his uh, qualities he is uh, he he is married to one of the most beautiful women on this planet and she is sachi or not on this planet on this in this universe she is said to be uh, look alike 
of goddess lakshmi in all her attributes if you know if you read the bhagavad purana you will get to know about her also she is said to be a look alike of goddess lakshmi in many many ways so goddess lakshmi is supposed to be very beautiful herself she got married to one of the handsomest man on this universe narayana so she is very very good looking and that's the same quality that you would find in shakti but that does not stop indra from having a weakness for very beautiful women now ahalya was the manas putri of lord brahma when uh, when the creator of the universe gives birth manas or otherwise uh, manas means of the mind or otherwise to a to a beautiful girl do you not think that she would be imparted with all the qualities including beauty so she is also ahalya is also given a very beautiful look okay and as ahalya is given a beautiful look uh she is also given to prishi gautam okay to be uh, brought up with all the attributes good qualities see we all have potential within us but th- that potential has to be worked on it has to be uh, it has to be rubbed number of times it has to be turned into kinetic energy such that it comes to the forefront it has to be polished so for her potential to be exposed to be polished she was given into the care of rishi gautam and finally she was also married to rishi gautam so when she attains a age which is you know very uh, when she attains a very uh, kumari avastha or she attains a beaut post tributary age when she looks beautiful she starts changing uh, uh, in form and she grows more and more beauty as as a she blooms from a young girl to a, towards being an adult she starts to look more and more beautiful and indra having an eye for all beautiful women also starts eyeing her in the same manner however she is betrothed to uh, gautam rishi and married off to him now indra comes to a point where he has to have uh, you know ahalya as a partner so what does he do Gautam Rishi has a routine that he goes for a uh, into the forest as you know uh, doing his penance and things like that so at that time Indra because he's already had a part and before i move ahead i would like to also add that Indra is not a person Indra is a post Indra is a post which is given to a Uh, to a person who has done enough penance enough merit including 100 ashvamedha yagyas to uh, to you know uh, move into that category so when we have when we have an ias officer for indians or when you have a revenue officer for any uh, any country they have to write certain exams and they have to write, get certain amount of marks you have to have certain qualification because before you become um, you know a government job holder in any post so that is the qualifications the certain amount of penance required by a person to be able to qualify for the post of indra so we cannot just take him to be a person who's light, you know light in stature he's had a body of penance behind him and because that penance uh, penance uh, so that he has done warrants him to get on to the post he will enjoy that post he will live that post and as the term bhog sanskrit term bhog means he will enjoy to the best of his capacity when that the fruits and the merits of that penance are over you know he has to leave that post and somebody else moves in he has to retire and as he retires there's another officer stepping in so this is about indra 
so if we see if we think how he could you know uh, he could take the form of rishi gautam he could because he did have enough talents behind him and then he cohabits with ahilya and ahilya is also taken up taken back a back as a person uh, because uh, she 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 is uh, she is under the you know she is still under the implication that he is rishi gautam what happens is in one such instance rishi gautam happens to catch an imposter coming out of his cottage and then because these rishis also had huge amount of penance but they did not merit because of their penance but they did not want to become indra people who want to become indra uh, would uh, the kings were generally the ones who did the ashvamedha yogyas and all because it was a post of power and position they were more interested in becoming enlightened so nevertheless what he does is that he uses his water his power of penance and then he pours it on indra knows that who the uh, imposter is and then tells indra typically that may you may your body be adorned with thousand yonis you know what yoni is is a female organ so this absolutely more than what had he done he was not repentant about what he had done but he was very much worried very much taken aback by what what the curse he has so he goes and he does severe again he does a lot of severe uh, you know tapa meditation and everything penance to uh, get rid of all that is you know sticking out of his body what's growing out of his body so then uh, then he pleases lord shiva and lord shiva says i am sorry but because of your deed and because of the curse any curse whoever gives a curse even he cannot take back a curse so if you are cursing anybody think twice before you are doing that because the words like an arrow when out of the bow they can never return back your words your curses can never come back so don't do it to anybody <laughs> so when uh, so lord shiva says that you are not supposed to you know um, i cannot revert it but i i can only give it tell you that the yoni will take the form of an eye so indra is also called thousand eyed because the yoni on his body became eyes always remember that any person when talking about a uh, a person who has a planet in jeshta will have immense capabilities immense because let's not forget we will come across instances when this person when indra will will and is because of these habits of his you know lusting after women uh being addicted to somras and everything we might for instance forget the uh, power behind him but i would suggest that when you are seeing this nakshatra know that there is a huge immense power in this nakshatra is just that these qualities need to be toned down and especially now as baba ji mentioned that jupiter is passing through this nakshatra so when jupiter is passing through this nakshatra he has the ability to um you know garner to control this uh, nakshatra or the qualities within you an elderly person any person whom you love any person whom who is uh, a guiding factor in your life will be able to help and i should also add one point here that during this time please do not please do not disrespect your elders your guiders because once when uh, indra did that he had a massive problem in his hand that we can see in the story of brittasu okay so uh, we take up the case of tiger woods here 
we all know who tiger woods was okay is he is one of one of the main uh, he is an extremely talented player he is an extremely talented player um golf player and he has maximum titles in his, on his name he has he has been one of the youngest players to get these titles onto his name but what is he known as he is known as for his lustful behavior for his infidelity for his high ego and his adulterous nature even don don also has moon in jista right <laughs> right so so he trump has so much of power you know and he could he's a leo lagna that's the fourth house so he comes from a very good family but all what happened in trump's case we seen you know what is happening he left right and center he is not accepting what you know what the most sane people in his organization are telling him to do so you never know what's going to happen and similarly in case of uh, tiger woods you see he has his moon here he uh, in jeshta and moon is the 11th lord okay third house is the bhagya of marriage uh third house is also friends and moon is the 11th lord of again friends and moon is the dispositor of sixth lord of scandals sex uh, not sex more it's more of scandals and it's all more of blemish on your name it's more on uh, litigations and divorce and it's a fifth lord of romance and when there is a mars and moon uh, you know when there is a mars aspect on moon it kind of mars retrograde mars is definitely the energy of a, a highly sexual energy it's a very very uh, and it can take a perverted look also it can take a perverted um, direction if there is malefic effect on it and this retrograde mars on both the sides is by mandi and ketu it is already it's already in a pap kartari yoga aspecting um, moon and moon again is in a pap kartari yoga between rahu and sun so we see that and it's the third house of bhagya of marriage third house of creativity third house of valor the valor in him is also very strong it's with venus the second lord of money the ninth lord of um you know bhagya luck everything and there is an exchange between the third lord and the ninth lord but we are not talking about exchange we here more talking about um you know what moon is to be said and if you see you will also see that this moon if it changes sides uh, because they say in parivartana you you send the planets back to their positions but they retain 50% of the other house so then it's again um, guru uh, you know mars and moon conjunct which will definitely give you a very strong uh, a very strong litigation the third house very strong libido in the house of scorpions okay so now we move on to uh, mahatma gandhi's chart was also there with his son um, hira lal mohandas gandhi that also explains a lot of things i uh, indra we will see is very competitive we will see how indra's competitiveness creates problems for everybody okay mm. but before that we need to um, know what happened is another thing that you know uh, when i was telling you about the not going against the elders what happens is uh, indra was going to win a battle he wins a battle and he so uh, he so proud of that and he so full of 
ego after having won a battle that says Dhruvasa who is uh, who's just come out of his meditation who's just come out of his very strong penance and everything he has a garland around his head okay so just to honor uh, and he's just come out so he's that uh, he's vibrating with energy and that energy a lot of that energy because that he was wearing that garland was also within him so as a gift of power he ha he wants to give it to indra but indra is so high in his ego that you know what he did uh, he puts it in on the head of eravat you know his elephant and this elephant uh, because it is the smell of the flower is so strong takes it and he puts he just throws it on the ground and Dhruvasa, we know all about Rishi Dhruvasa. Rishi, it's very easy. If there's one person to anger in the planet quicker than Lord Shiva, it's uh, Rishi Dhruvasa. So Rishi Dhruvasa gets flared up. And you know, Rishi Dhruvasa is a form of Lord Shiva. Yeah, I think you that. know. Anasuya. Huh? Son yes, of Anasuya. Anasuya. Yeah, born of Anasuya. So we know that. So what he does is, Rishi Dhruvasa gets into anger and he just curses, uh, you know, Indra and says, you did this. You were so high on your uh, ego and on your pride of having won the battle, right? You will lose every battle from now. So he gets perplexed and then the lot of things ensues. Finally, he, he, but before that he cries and you know, it's easy to win over Dhruvasa. I mean, once Dhruvasa comes back to his normal stage, he understands and he says that, okay, you have to do certain remedies, but you know, none of us want to go through uh, the phase where you have to, from a very high position, you have to fall down. So remember for those people who have, uh, especially for those people who have a planet in Jeshta Nakshatra, not to hurt your elders at this moment. All of us, none of us should hurt our elders. None of us should ever. But more so for people with, with you know, planets in Jeshta, this will have far-reaching effects in your life. Very far-reaching effects. So we're taking the case of uh, Winston Churchill uh, here, and we'll see more. He has, uh, again, Winston Churchill has um, his, we'll see it later, we'll see how a ace sportsman accomplished, okay? Like I are not seen in this nakshat. It's not seen only because, you know, he drank, he uh, smoked a lot, these things about Winston Churchill would come out that he drank, he smoked a lot, uh, he was um, he he had interest in other females and things like that. But you need to understand that he was one of the masterminds of the World War Two. Of that leaders in the twentieth century. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of side things also that come out about Winston Churchill and his treatment to the uh, you know the UN nations and the Bengal famine that is also very famous. Yes, that, that's also attributed to him, the Bengal famine. So we so you see, it's also about manipulation. It's again manipulation by him. It's Venus. It's a second lord moving into the third house, and it's a retrograde Venus where he does not show any compassion you know when a planet like venus is retrograde it becomes equivalent to mars so he has two crude planets sitting in his malefics in his third house i have to win by hook or by crew the accomplishments of being an ace writer he was a great painter winston churchill Sir Winston Churchill. But all this gets hidden because of his manipulations and because of other habits that are not very 
uh, admirable. And moreover, his Venus is in the Gandhanta region. region. It's 29 degree 56 minutes. Addictions are a must. Wow. Exactly at that point. Yeah, so it's very it's very close to the you know to moving into. In fact, it has just re-entered. If I'm not mistaken, it has just re-entered exactly. from Mula from Sagittarius exactly. uh, back into Scorpio. Some very so strong I desire. Very strong desire from past life to complete something. So he's come back with a very strong Mar uh, Martian uh, quality of. In fact, you know, I still remember last year. For two months around, Saturn was retrograde from Mula to Jeshta for around two to three months, I guess. And yes. that time, my God, <laughs> I mean, whoever I have talked to during that time or I talk to them now about that time, my God, they've all, most of the people I know, they've had it, including me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's because it's because a transition, uh, Babaji. It's because of the transition. It's movement to and fro. I mean, just take it like that. First, you cross the sea, okay, and they tell you that you cross the sea with such a lot of perils. You find this you have to conquer, that you have to conquer. You've done all that, and then you have to tell you that excuse me, but you have not got your passport. You have to go back and get your passport. Boy, I have been outing my system. I have been throwing in the sea all the 15 days and I have to make a journey back, get my passport and then come back again. I mean, I could kill myself then because of that. It's a similar case. So first you learn to cross over the waters. It's, it's a very difficult situation, but nevertheless, you've learned to do that. And then they're telling you, you have to go back in that very same water. But you, uh, but you know, but after these two journeys, you are now used to it. It's like, okay, now I know what I can do and what I can't. It's like moving ahead, going back and then coming back again. It's doing a three-way journey in the same zone. So whatever happened for the first time uh, was not very well done. So you went back, completed a task very well, finished up the knots because it's one end, ending of one whole cycle from fire to water. Fire, earth, uh, you know, air and water. You complete one cycle and then you move back again into the fire. So when you come back again into the water, you have to finish certain karmas, tie it up and then go back to start something new. So you would have started anything new only after Saturn moved back into Mula for the final time for 30 years. Because last to last year also, Saturn had moved into uh, Mula, come yes. back again into Jeshta and then again moved. So uh, Saturn gave us two years to finish our pending karma before it said, it's all right. Now I will start giving you victory from Purvashara. That's that's the way Saturn operated. So now, when we are talking about uh, you know, we're talking about manipulations uh, by Lord Indra. So when we're talking about manipulations, uh, you know, any of the CEO of a company, you take it, they are always very very skeptical, scared, very possessive about the chair. Every person. On there, any person who has a chair or a seat is right from that peon in the office. Okay? <laughs> to the CEO. We all are very, very skeptical. We are all very, very uh, much in love with our throne, with our chair. Indra is not different. In fact, he could be obsessed with his throne. Okay? Because any other king who is able to complete 100 Ashwamedha Yagyas will automatically qualify for becoming an Indra. So if I qualify to become, um, you know, the heir apparent to my father's throne, okay, or my brother's throne, 
my brother's throne could be under a danger right so he will have to take good care of it he will have to make sure that he does work very well so that he remains seated where he is but indra would make sure that the ashwamedh yagya the 100th ashwamedh yagya is not complete so that you don't qualify only it's like somebody you know is going to write a paper which will qualify you for your seat him or her for your seat what you do is you hijack his or her answer sheet that's what indra was on the lookout you can see him peeping from the skies you know in this story here peeping from the skies seeing that sagar uh, you know uh, sagar is the name of the king who conducted the ashwamedha yagya and he uh, had advised the um, or should i say the horse the horse in the ashwamedha yagya wherever it's a sacrificial horse it's a very beautiful piece of you know horse who's who's chosen amongst the best of the horses and then he is allowed to roam free so whichever territory he covers the horse covers wherever he goes that area belongs to comes under the tutelage of the king whose horse he is and this renders that entire area to pay a tax to that king the king of the king the king of that area becomes a vassal of the king whose horse he is and they have to pay a tax to that king now uh, when when the king surrenders in the picture you can see a king surrendering his uh, his sword to the horse signifying they are they are becoming a vassal to the king concerned okay and secondly the uh, the king would now the rule of that king would now prevail in this kingdom this horse after he has traveled all the territories and finally decides to return home then he returns home a sacrifice is huge sacrifice is made and this horse is then sacrificed he is offered as a sacrifice you know that is why it's called ashwamedh yagya ashwa means uh, the horse so the horse is sacrificed okay and uh, now 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 this indra is absolutely seeing that sagar and sagar uh, was the ancestor of none other than lord rama so he was a raguvanshi so uh, i always have been taught that you know the children will always learn from the parents the shri ram was born in the in the kul or in the race or in the lineage of all these stellar personalities except asmanja he was a very naughty not naughty he was a very vicious kind of a person and he was killed by quite early on but uh, apart from that you know all of rama's lineage if you look aja and many other kings nahusha all these kings were very stellar in their personalities okay so uh, then only did the kings have the ability to invite a deity or lord vishnu into their homes as to be born in their kul or in their race or in their lineage or in their family so as we put in for our children as the examples that we set are what our children will take us on coming back to this nakshatra here indra is peeping he sees that uh, sagar is about to complete his yagna 100th yagna and then qualify as the king of the um, you know qualify as to become an indra in the coming future so he is very worried he is like i don't want this to happen and what he does is he in the as because he has to win by hook or by crook 
So he steals this horse. And what he does is, there is a place where Kapil Mahamuni is, um, he's the son of Arunduti, but that's a different story. So he is, uh, Kapil Mahamuni is into deep meditation, deep penance, he's doing a lot of self introspection. He goes and he ties that ray, uh, horse there. If the horse of the Ashwamedha Yagya is not found, it is said to be inauspicious to the greatest degree. So the horse is searched how and low, but yet not found. And Sagar had 60,000 sons. I am not denying, defying or anything this contentment. I am just telling you as it has been written in the Vedas that uh, in the, um, in the uh, Bhagavad Puran, that Sagar had 60,000 sons apart from Asmadras. So he tells his sons, he requests them, orders them to go and find the horse. When these sons go and they find uh, <coughs> that it is tied to a tree near Kapil Mahamuni, they all get very flared up and they start speaking all nonsense. Uh, no matter how irritated you are, would you go and start shouting at any person who is stellar as compared to you in every ways, in age, in experience, in merit, anything. That is not what the upbringing is all about. And all Kapil Mahamuni does is open his eyes and look at them. And the 60,000 of the kings there, the, the princes there, they all become heaps of ashes. So, uh, what happens is this and and when uh, and when sagar comes to know about he's very very heartbroken so he request and his son asmanja is good for nothing so he, but his grandson anshuman is a very stellar personality so now Ansh he sends anshuman over to do penance uh, and uh, get the horse, not just get the horse, do a lot of other work also. Anshuman realizing that 60,000 of his ancestors will not get Gati or will not find any salvage anywhere is very, very perturbed, is very, very um, upset about it. And he goes and he, you know, just imagine a young child, 60,000 prince, they talk all as if, you know, they are ego personified to Kapil Mahamuni. And this young prince goes and bows and very gently says, Saya, I bow before you. Please help me. So the way they have the same, uh, they both of them have the same, uh, you know, objective in mind. But the way one is talking and the way the other is talking makes all the difference. Again, Jaisa Nakshatra people, you people have a lot of ability, but showcase it like wearing, a, you know, a iron fist in a kid glove, you will go much more further. Then, and Kapil Mahamuni gives him a very, very beautiful and a reverential look and says, look son, uh, I understand what you want. I know that you want Gati or you want Sulas and you want a heavenly abode movement for all these 60,000 uncles of yours. But it is only possible by your grandson Bhagirat. When he comes to this planet, he will invite Ganges over. So there are three generations, Anshuman, his son and Bhagirat. Anshuman's grandson, all of them work to get the Ganges on the earth and that is why Ganges is also known as Bhagirathi. The Yajna is destroyed, everything happens, but in one way, Indra was responsible for getting the Ganges on this planet for us, so we should be very thankful for him for that. But we see is that Indra is an ace manipulator, okay? So he's an ace manipulator, and very strategic in a very nice way. I would like to explain this about uh, Eric Siegel. 